Gabriel, firstly, thank you for sitting down with me um, ahead of the release of your fantastic new film, uh, Arsene Wenger, Invincible. I have to say, before we get into it, it is an absolute masterpiece. And as an Arsenal man, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. First of all, do you want to tell us a little bit about how it came about? Sure. Um, thank you very much. Uh, the, I'd always wanted to do a documentary about Arsene Wenger, uh, really since, I, you know, since the end of the 90s, when he was this incredible new presence in English football with his ideas and, and clearly incredibly articulate and interesting. I remember asking Bob Wilson, who was at ITV at the time and also goalkeeping coach yep. uh, with Arsene and David Seaman, can you, can you persuade Arsene Wenger to do a documentary for ITV? Uh, because I was starting to get into longer form then. I said, yeah, okay, I'll ask him, yeah, yeah. Bob came back and said, no chance. <laughs> he says, I'm not vain enough to do a documentary. That was what Arsene said. And uh, there's no way back to that sort of answer because you're not going to persuade anybody. It's only when they want to reflect on things, only when you have time and only when you're willing to talk about yourself and me being be vain and self-critical and be forced to answer questions. Uh, are you really, are you re is it really worth doing a documentary yeah. about you? So um, a few years ago, a couple of years ago, a friend of mine, close friend of mine, Christian Jean-Pierre, who worked at TF1 as a commentator and a presenter and who knew Arsene very well from Arsene's work as a, as a co-commentator with him on World Cups mm -hmm. and Euros with France. I've known Christian for a long time. Uh, came to me and said, I think Arsene might be willing to do a documentary. So this would have been about uh, summer of 20, well, uh, uh, it would have been before COVID anyway. Yeah. And, and we got it going and we based it with Arsene's um, reflections. It would be based around the invincible season because that's his proudest achievement. Sure. But that was, that was the one, if you like, stipulation Arsene put in there was that that's, that's a season I'd really like to go back to. But of course, that's the season you would go back to. But around that, we then built the framework and wrote the framework of the story, which is more so, than that season. So at the time, Arsene's book hadn't come out, right? at the time you guys began? When we work. began, yeah, good question. When we began doing, um, when we began, if you like, getting to green light stage, Arsene's book had been written, but it was about to come out. Okay. Arsene's book came out pretty much around the time that we started to do our first interviews with him. I think it was October 2020, something yeah, like that. around that, yeah. Yeah. So we were able to look at Arsene's book and get a sense of, obviously, what he'd said in it and aim differently aim I would like to think um, to get more from him that was personal that was self-critical and that was emotional that that's what we we wanted to do uh, in addition to, to hopefully telling a good story I think you definitely succeeded in that because one of the things that I think a lot of Arsenal fans felt including myself having read Arsenal's book was that it kind of glossed over some of the more difficult periods in his Arsenal tenure I mean we all know that the way that his Arsenal career ended. Watching your film made me feel a little bit sad about it. Did that come across from Arsene when you were putting together this film? Could you feel the change in tone? In what sense sad? Uh, sad, sad on his behalf or sad, on, sad in terms of the way that he was treated? How do you mean? A little bit of both. Sad in terms of the fact that he was treated the way he was by certain sections of the fan base. And again, in the film, there's a couple of bits where you, know, you, you highlight the treatment or some of the treatment that was getting directed at Wenger. But as an Arsenal fan, I felt sad that this man who had brought us so much had to go through this before he left the football club. Yeah, well, I th but I think that's, the, you know, if you were to talk about it maybe in broader terms, it's just the nature of life. I think Thierry Henry says in the film, how many times does a manager get a happy ending? Yeah. You know, it, it's very rare. Ferguson managed his exit superbly. It was a masterclass. And I think it, it was... Um, uh, it was important for us to cover that and, and to get into that with Arsene and to get his, I think, closer to his definitive reflections on, on what happened. And I think it's only with time sometimes that you're able to get a sense of your own failings and you're able to get a sense of the real truth. Some of the emotion has gone, not all of it, by the way, because he's still very emotional about Arsenal. I think that comes across in the film and the fact that he, he obviously hasn't been back to the Emirates yet says a great deal too. 
Yeah, indeed. And you, you've made some other great football films as well, um, Finding Jack Charlton, etc., etc. Brilliant stuff. How does arson, well, those films were built around wonderful football people that were loved by so many. How does arson as a man and his achievements kind of stack up to Sir Bobby Robson, who you made a film about, Jack Charlton, etc.? Where does Wenger kind of rank in that? I think he, they all rank top of their own division, so I think they're separate. I don't think you can compare them necessarily. That Their stories are, are different, and the way in which they achieved what they did is different. I think that there, are, there are similarities, I think, in terms of where they came from. One of the fascinating things about this film, and we were, it was important that we did it, was we took Arsen back to Dutlenheim, and we filmed in Dutlenheim, where he was from. We, we, we got a, I, I got, for the first time, a sense of a true sense of his roots, seeing him there, seeing him at home, where it all began, because it hasn't changed a great deal at all. And the, you know, the sense that, the true sense that he is, it is a very working class background, uh, where life was hard, and that was important, I think. And so similar to Jack Charlton, or similar to Bobby Robson, or similar to Sir Alex Ferguson, he's from that same type of really hard, working class upbringing, but your value system is very strong. What your parents and your community give you is a core set of values that's going to put you in good stead. And Arsene had that. But then, on, unlike everyone in his village, he had this incredible ambition to be, to be much more. And I think those characters that I've focused on, in terms of their stories, had in them this gene to be leaders, to be much more than, than they were expected to be. Yeah. And, and, and that does interest me. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's fantastic, and it really does come across. You mentioned a couple of the contributors to the film, Thierry Henry, Ian Wright's in there, Patrick Vieira, a few others. As an Arsenal fan, it was a treat seeing all of those on the screen. Um, one of the, the, the people in it who really kind of surprised me a little bit, or his words really resonated me, with me, was Sir Alex Ferguson, because I grew up during the height of that rivalry between Wenger and Ferguson, and I find it difficult to switch that off as an Arsenal man. So to see Fergie talking so openly and so kind of uh, complimentary, I guess, of, of Arsene was really touching. How did his involvement come about? W did you approach him? Was he sort of keen to do it? Yeah, well, well Sir Alex is somebody I've, I've been fortunate enough to have a, a relationship with after football. He contributed to the Bobby Robson film because Bobby Robson was his mentor. Uh, you, you never want to overdo your, your, your uh, requests, but... Um, I, I did find it, obviously I felt it was important that he was in this film because not only are there key scenes directly that were written into the script in which Manchester United play Arsenal in absolutely key sliding doors moments games, um, but of course the, the relationship that he had with Arsene, their rivalry enabled both their teams I think to push each other and both had a, uh, had a huge impact on each other's life and career. So I think um, Sir Alex appreciated that when, when the offer was put to him to be part of Arsene's film. And I think knowing that this is the first time that Arsene has done a film, and, and I, I, I would think it's the last, Sir Alex knew, and always does know, the value of his own contribution. So I asked, he said yes, and, um, and gave us um, some really good insight into Arsene and his background but also in, into, I think, the nature of Arsene's achievement, especially in that season. Yeah, absolutely. Unbelievable achievement, and one that might not ever be matched. So it was absolutely right to focus in on that. Um, for me, what I, like I said already, I really enjoyed the fact that there isn't, you know, there isn't the glossing over of some of the more dark moments in, in Arsene Wenger's Arsenal career. Um, from a kind of filmmaker's perspective, do you find it a little bit difficult when you're kind of with someone like us and not to be seen to be pushing towards that side of things so much, although you want to tell that part of the story? Yeah, we had three interviews. We didn't have that much time. It was COVID restricted in terms of some of our access, so we had to maximise every moment we could with Arsene, and, and he's a busy man, as you know. He is, he is a global football figure who wants to change the game still. So... He's not, he's not we a won't get into that. <laughs> we won't get into that. He's, he's not a retired gentleman who, who some might think should be, should be relaxing. That's just not his way. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of we, we had three main interview slots. 
So we had three days in that sense, three half days, and we had to maximize that, that time. And it was imperative for me that we would talk about things that were difficult, which would involve Arsenal, which would involve the, the, the second half of his reign at Arsenal, the last few years in particular at Arsenal, and, and also the sacrifices that his football addiction led him to make. And, and I think he knew that we would be entering into that territory. And Arsene is one of those guys, and this has always been consistent since the very start when he came to England. And this is why I think he made such a good first impression. He is the sort of person who respects what you, you ask him. Or he respects the right to ask. Yeah. He might not always answer it the way you want it, but he will respect your right to ask. And, and that hasn't changed. And yeah, we did push him. I did push him on certain things. And I, and I hope that, that the reason for doing that he will appreciate is to get a real sense now of him looking at in detail for the first time and articulating for the first time how he really feels about what went wrong you know, when you're talking about that area of things. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Is, is that the biggest challenge when making a film like this? Being, knowing how far to push kind of thing to get what you need to get to make a great film. Is that the biggest challenge or are there other things that... No, uh, it's on? one of them. I think the hardest challenge first and foremost is, is getting, the, getting the guy to sign up, you know, to get your talent to agree, to, to, to be in the chair, to want them to commit. And then, then to know that when, once committed, they're, they're into it. They want to do it. They, they want the best representation of themselves, but also respect that the representation isn't going to be how they see themselves. It never is. You know, you make a documentary about somebody, it's very rare that they're going to be happy with it, every element of it, yeah. because that's not how they see themselves. It's, a, it's, a, I, uh, it's our representation, along with Christian Jean-Pierre of, of Arsene, but hopefully one which is going to cover the issues that need to be asked. So journalistically, and my background is in journalism, you have to keep that, that base there, I think, so that what you get is authentic and that f for the, those who know the story already, there's going to be more in it. There's going to be something in that that they've not heard before. Yeah. There's going to be something from Arsene they didn't expect or from Patrick Vieira or from Sir Alex Ferguson. That, that, that's, that's your challenge, and maybe, yeah, that's, that's therefore, if you like, the hardest thing you've got you've got to overcome. So was there like a meeting with Arsene whereby you had to pitch the idea to him and how you were going to do it for him to kind of agree? Well, well Christian Jean-Pierre, who's my co-director, and we made two versions. We've made a French version and an English version, mm -hmm. so all the interview sessions we doubled up with interviews. Um, they followed the same script and structure. But um, Christian Jean-Pierre Jean and I put that to us and, yeah, listen, the framework will be the invincible season. Beyond that, we're going to tell your story as much as we can in the, in the, in the space of 95 minutes. So we'll go into other elements of your life and, and your career. But obviously, it will center around Arsenal. I guess one of the, the, the questions I've been itching to ask, but I wanted to save it towards the end is, has Arsene seen it yet? And, and has he provided you with any feedback? Arsene provided us with feedback. He saw it a couple of times. One, once near the end of the editing process, which was, uh, you know, which we always like to do, um, we 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 did change a few things. Not not editorially. He wanted a little bit more action in there, which was good feedback for us. Um, Premier League rights aren't cheap, as you know. But uh, anyway, we were able to do something about that. And I think he, you know, he. He, this isn't perfect like the Invincible season in his eyes, this film. But I think he appreciates that, you know, that we wanted to try and be as truthful and authentic and neutral as possible. He respects that, you know. And I think there'll be elements in the film that he's really happy with and some elements in the film that he's not so happy with. But in a way, if he'd been happy with everything, you'd start to question yourself. Because it's a story where there isn't a right or wrong answer. There are interpretations about his decisions. It's still not right between Arsenal and Arsene. So you, you, can't, you can't say everything is right if it's not right. Do you, do you get that feeling from him that it's not right between him? I know he hasn't been back to the club, and yeah. we as Arsenal fans know that there is obviously 
you know, the way it all unfolded towards the end was unfortunate. And, and I think he was very harshly treated by certain sections of, of our club's fan base. And I'm actually a little bit ashamed of that because of all the brilliant things he gave. But does that still come across? Do you feel, because I got it from the film that there is that in, in Arsene. Did well, you feel that kind of Well, then to if, you? if you got it, yeah, if you got it from the film, then that's authentic to what, to what we, we felt interviewing him. You know, we've not, we've not changed anything. I think uh, it's complicated. Yeah, and I, I, I think, he says, I think, it, I had a love for Arsenal. And the end, when a love story ends, it's painful. It, it's as simple as that. Uh, Thierry Henry says, uh, you know, it's very rare that l love stories end with a happy ending each time. So that's where we are with it. And it's, it's maybe the result of the fact that he loved Arsenal so much that it, it's, it's as painful at times, or was, as, was very painful at the time, and, and, remains a little, and, and remains difficult. Yeah, great stuff. And honestly, to anyone that hasn't seen it yet, well, obviously it's not out yet, but to those of you <laughs> that are planning to watch it, make sure you get down there. Uh, Arsene Wenger Invincible is in cinemas from November 11th, and it's on Blu-ray, DVD, and digital download from November the 22nd. I'm buzzing um, to watch it again. <laughs> Uh, Gabriel, it's a fantastic piece of work. So congratulations to everybody involved. And uh, looking forward to our listeners and our viewers uh, sharing their feedback on the film as well. And thank you for talking to me. Great stuff. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.